Hello, today I'm here to talk about configuration and privacy for Dynatrace's session replay product. We'll start off with the configuration topic by opening up our real user monitoring application. Session replay is built into the RUM product, which offers numerous advantages. The first advantage is the ease of deployment. Looking at our RUM application, we go into settings, and under the cost control enablement, we will see that there is a toggle for enabling session replay. Whenever real, monitoring, real user monitoring is used, toggling on this option will automatically turn on session replay for all the monitored pages. You don't need to worry about code changes. You don't need to worry about complex regex, make sure that you're grabbing the right page. You don't need to worry about finding out that you weren't monitoring a page you thought you were monitoring. If real user monitoring is on the page, toggling this will automatically enable session replay for one agent, in submitted RUM applications, as well as our agentless auto updating tag. On the mobile application side, enabling the toggle and using our instrumentation wizard will allow instrumenting session replay into mobile through our SDK. This screen has a few additional controls that's worth mentioning. First is the ability to enable a cost and traffic control so you can determine how many sessions use session replay. Second is that we have both environment or our global settings and a per application setting as well. So you can control this for every application at once or individual applications. We also use an identity and access management policy system for granular control over these settings. What that means is that you may have a user that you want to have administrative access in the tenant for certain functions, session replay, you know, synthetic, log monitoring. You may say, I want them to have access to only one part, but not another part. Our policies allow that. You can say, I will give them access to creating synthetic scripts, but I will not give them access to modify session replay, whether it's through the UI or through that API. So we have those fine granular controls to make sure that you know who's accessing this and who's modifying it. Now, once this function is enabled and the tag is updated, which is automatic, whether you're using the one agent tag or automatically updating agentless tag, Session Replay will be enabled for all the pages that RUM is monitoring. Session Replay is integrated into the Real User Monitoring product, which offers a number of advantages. First is that Session Replay will take all the settings from RUM. This includes the RUM data privacy settings that we use for the Real User Monitoring product. Things like you know, enabling do not track or honoring do not track, masking IP addresses, masking data and URLs, whether you're using persistent or session cookies, all of that is honored by the Session Replay uh, product. In addition, Session Replay also honors any configuration you've made within the application. Things like user action naming rules. Maybe you have a custom defined rule for some page names. Or things like metadata collected through what we call properties. It's optional, but you can set the RUM application to grab things like session IDs, user tags, anything that's a cookie, CSS selector, JavaScript variable, can all be integrated into the RUM product and it will work with Session Replay. And I'll quickly show a demo of that right now. This is our list of RUM sessions. We have the ability to toggle on whether or not we want to see sessions with Session Replay. Here we can also do any filtering based on the data collected by the real user monitoring product. So I might want to see a user from a specific location. Or let's say I want to find a user who uh, has a front end error message. And we are collecting that with this RUM application, I would say, show me all the uh, users who booked but saw a failure message. Filter down, I will see a list of those sessions. For anyone, I can click into them and see exactly where they went and what they did. So all this RUM data, like you know, what browser they're on, um, is integrated as well as their journey, as we see down here, and any metadata. I can simply play the replay and at any point I can hover over and actually dive directly into the waterfall for that action and drill down all the way to the back end if I wanted to. So by living on top of the ROM, it is fully integrated in end to end journey, front end all the way to back end through the um, traces. Now, one thing to note here is that admins have granular control over who can view session replays. We allow the ability to grab a uh, grant session replace only a handful of users. Let's say you want you know, only one group to be able to view them. We can do that. There's also the ability to control uh, what end users see things masked and do not, which we'll go into a bit later. 
We also have what we call a management zone, which allows access to only specific entities. That applies to session replay as well. So if someone has access to application one, but not application two, and they're viewing a session that cross over both of them and both have session replay, they will only see the session replay for the application they've been granted access to. So whether you need to block access to session replay for some users, allowing them to see only specific applications, or allow them to see only specific data, that can all be done through our control system. Now I want to talk about security and privacy controls in session replay. As we see here in our RUM application, there is a section under data privacy for session replay. If you view into it, it's like the enablement screen, it can be configured at both a global level and an individual application level. So you do have those granular controls, whether you want a uniform policy through all your applications or a per application policy. Now the first control we see is the opt-in mode. When this option is disabled, every single page that RUM is on will have session replay captured. If it's enabled, users will not have session replay captured until an API call is triggered. So you have a button saying accept, fire the API call, session replay will become active. It's important to note that the session replay agent itself will not become active when this, is, when this option is enabled until it receives the API call. So you have to worry about inadvertently recording people without the permission. If you're using this mode, API must be fired to, uh, to start the session replay. Next, we have the URL exclusions for our web application. Here's where you can define if you want some pages excluded from being monitored with session replay. The default RUM data will still be active on these pages if the RUM agent is enabled, but session replay won't send any data back you know, until they navigate to a URL which does not match the exclusion pattern. If this is left disabled, all pages will have RUM captured and session replay captured by default, as long as session replay is enabled. Next, we have our masking controls, which is probably one of the most significant privacy settings. Session replay isn't a video, which allows us to fine tune what we capture, what's sent back, and what is displayed. Any web elements or attributes can be blocked from being recorded by using these options. This block, when it's set under recording masking settings, happens at the agent level, meaning that the data is masked before it even leaves the user's browser and gets sent to Dynatrace. Very important because you want to make sure that that data just isn't leaving their browser and recording masking settings are what does that. Our default is mask all. That will mask pretty much everything visible on the page. Input fields, UI control labels, list boxes, form data, text, paragraphs, uh, attribute values, even images, except as long as they're not images are background images or set by the CSS. For text, we will replace it with asterisks. Images, we replace it with a placeholder image of the same general size and dimensions. And that's to ensure that the page can, uh, layout remains consistent whether you have masking on or not. Now, we also have additional masking settings under the recording masking settings. This includes masking user inputs. So the agent will automatically mask any input fields, list boxes, form data controls, etc. So things like search boxes, username input, anything they're entering in a text field will probably automatically be masked at the agent level. We also have an allow list and a block list if you want to get more granular. You can put down web elements or attributes and they will be masked by the agent. In addition, the agent will automatically look for the attribute data-dtrum-masks as it records. If this is inserted into the code, the tag will automatically block that element or mask that element regardless of what the UI controls say. So that's sort of a code level, absolute privacy control for session replay is that if that's in the code, the tag itself will automatically mask that. We also have playback masking settings which follow the same general principles, masking all, user input, allow list, or block list. Now one important thing to note is that playback masking does not override recording masking. If you have recording masking set to mask all, and you have playback masking set to mask user input, it's still gonna mask everything. And that is because the data is masked before it even arrives to die and trace when it's set to the masking recording settings. Playback masking settings is for cases where you have some users who might want to have access to certain information, certain things visible on the screen, but you do not wish for other users to have access to that. So for instance, you might have a development team who needs to be able to see session IDs or maybe a username. But you might have a marketing team who's just interested in seeing where people are clicking and they don't need access to that potentially sensitive data. 
You can use our permission set settings to allow that. Some users can see this data mask, some users can't. So that is what the playback masking settings are for. We can see the masking permissions in action in our help documentation page. Let's assume the application is set up to capture session replay. It's set up for a recording masking of mask user input and playback masking of mask all. If a user does not have permission to view session replay, they'll get an error message saying you do not have permission to view session replay. If they have the standard replay session data permissions, they will replay the data back with the playback masking in effect. Now, in this case here, in my scenario, that means that everything would be masked. All images, as you can see here, and all text. If they have replay session data without masking, they will replay the data with the recording masking controls. In my example, it would be just the user input would be masked. So things like images, text, you know, on, on the pages, those will all be unmasked. The only thing that would be masked is user input. Form fields, text, uh, username entry boxes, etc. Now, the previous masking screen we're looking at was for web RUM applications. Mobile RUM applications also have a similar sense of data permission system. So mobile session replay comes with three predefined levels. Safest, which is the default, masks all editable text fields, images, labels, web views, and switches. Safe has all editable text fields are masked. And then custom masks by default everything the same as Safest, but you have the ability to decide which app components or views that you want to see masked or unmasked. As we can see here in the documentation, if you go with the custom masking route, you can choose which text fields, images, web views, et cetera, that you want to have masked. You can also mask um, selective views based on their accessibility identifier. So by placing that in the SDK, you can tell Session Replay to automatically mask that content and any interactions with that content. Similar to the web session replay masking, uh, we will automatically look for data dash dt rum dot mask or dash mask in the accessibility identifier. If we see it or if the agent sees it, that view will always be masked at the agent level before it's sent back to us. So that allows the same sort of data privacy configurations for the mobile application as we have for web applications. With that, we wrap up our overview of both configuration and privacy settings. The uh, takeaways are that it's pretty simple to enable, piggybacks off RUM, which comes with the advantages of having all the same privacy, configuration, metadata settings, granular controls for who can access these screens, who can view them, who can modify them, as well as granular controls for who can actually play back session replay as well. We also have recording and playback masking to ensure that you have masking at the browser levels so that data never arrives at Dynatrace, or for playback level in case you need to mask things for certain user groups playing things back, but other user groups need to see the full data. So those controls are all there to allow a very private and secure session replay.